Today on Locked On Red Wings, Dylan Larkin and the third line carry Detroit to a must-win victory over the New York Islanders. Your Locked On Red Wings, your daily podcast on the Detroit Red Wings. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Welcome back to the Lockdown Red Wings podcast. We are your very happy hosts for multiple reasons. Brian Fisher and Scotty Bentley. I'm a podcast producer for the Daily J, a WWJ News Radio podcast. Well, Scotty's the host of Locked On Tigers, as well as a freelance journalist for the Detroit News. And today's episode is brought to you by FanDuel. Make every moment more. And I told you people to put money down on the Golden Grizzlies. Did I not, Scotty? You did, baby. You did. Ain't, you, ain't, ain't nobody can deny it. You did. You absolutely did. If How you had, him? man, you would have won big him? money. My alma mater, baby, second ever tournament win. Hang the banner. <laughs> beat the Kentucky. Beat Kentucky in the tournament. Hang the banner, dude. Hang, hang the banner. Hang the banner. For for a program like the Golden Grizzlies, you 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 earn a banner. For a win like that. Banner. I'm sorry. I'm, I'm all about it. I'm all I, about it. I don't want to hear anything about like. It's soft hanging a banner for a thing like that. You want <laughs> oh, a tournament you're, you're game. You're serious. You want a banner. I, didn't, I, I thought I, you were like, take him. No, give me, give me a banner. I want a banner. <laughs> you could do it like NCAA Round of 64 victory. Win. Yeah, yeah round of NCAA victory. tournament win. Uh, but like in all seriousness, if they, not trying to get ahead of myself, but if they were to make it to the Sweet 16, I absolutely think they would hang a banner for that. I think they would. I, I they absolutely would. think they what would. What a cool, what a cool moment though. We had a lot of hockey to talk about, but like what a, what an awesome moment. It's cool seeing you know, going on social media and all I see is just people I grew up with celebrating the win and stuff. It's really cool. Oh yeah. It's something I never thought I'd see, but anyways, we got to get to the wings. We can talk, we can wrap back up and circle back to the Oakland at the end of the episode. Two points. Two big points for the Detroit Red Wings. Those games finishing at the exact same time as well was just like the stars aligning. I don't know. I'm thinking we're back. I think I'm three wins (laughs) in the last four games. Now you got a three point lead in the wild card. Only two points back. Of the Tampa Bay Lightning, don't talk to me about games in hand. I don't want to hear it right now. I'm riding. I'm riding a wave right now. <laughs> uh, and I mean, this win is huge because the Islanders going into tonight were very much in it. Right, you're one point yeah. ahead of the Washington Capitals, but you're only three points ahead of the Islanders. This win makes it so you're five points ahead. A loss would have made it just one point. You with uh, they still have like 12, 13 games left in the season, so they're still alive. But five points with that few of games left to play is a lot harder to overcome than one point. So this was such a huge win on multiple fronts. And I mean, I guess we get to our difference maker first here, Scotty. And I guess I'll steal it because I'm the one talking right now. Sorry, buddy. Uh, It it starts off with you getting your heart and soul in the locker room back out on the ice and the captain, Dylan Larkin. And he scores two goals in this game. And yes, I understand the second was an empty netter, but I see the game. And the first goal was so huge because it made the game from a tight 2-1 game to a 3-1 game. And it just completely swung the momentum back towards the Red Wings altogether. Like, Yeah, from a momentum perspective, there, there may not be a bigger moment in the season. And I don't mean like season momentum. I'm not trying to make it anything bigger than what it is. But single game momentum shifter like in in, at home Larkin's first game back he scores a goal to you know give you a a nice lead there uh the the, I thought the roof was gonna blow off of LCA man that was absolutely incredible we finally transitioned from Jared Goff to Dylan Larkin chance as was requested by Will Birchfield and a ton of other media members people yeah and like deservedly so like obviously the Lions deserved the chance when they were in the playoffs but like at the time it was continuing, the wings were on riding a hot streak. And so it deserved a change. And now it finally has. And he scores two big ones in this game. And you could tell right from the get go, the energy was so much better. The, he nearly got a standing ovation when he took to the ice for the first time in the first period because fans were so excited he was back. Did you see? Uh, did you, I mean, not the F bomb he dropped, but did you listen to Fisher's intermission interview? I mean, he even swear again. He was, yeah, he dropped an F-bomb and he apologized to his mom. It was really funny. But um, he, uh, even he said, like, you could tell he's talking and he's like, yeah, we love our captain. You know, he, he's, not only does he mean a lot for us on the ice, but he's like, yeah, like we can tell like that he's back out there. The energy is just different kind of thing. It's, it's clearly night and day because (laughs) the record the Wings have this year with Larkin in the lineup and without is staggering. It is staggering the difference. 
it was so obvious that it reverberated through the lineup. And like for obvious things too, right? Now you have Larkin back as your one C between Raymond and Perron. Down, yeah. Yeah. Comfort. We, we talked about that, right? Interestingly enough, they kept Zarnik in, even when Larkin got healthy to stay as four C move Valeno to the wing sprung bear scratched, which there's a conversation to have about the usage of bear. like, if you're not going to give him ice time, just send him back to Grand Rapids to play in the playoffs with them. But like, that's a different topic. We're not get into that in this episode because vibes are too high. But this like the they week. just looked and competed. You didn't give up the first goal in this game, which I mean leads us probably to our second difference maker. And you also, uh, you got out of the first period tied zero zero, and shots were close. You only getting outshot by two after the first. Like they finally. That sounds like it's. It sounds like it sounds like such a low bar, right? But it's true. They've gotten off to such bad starts, but this game they came and looked ready to play for once. So yeah. happy. And again, like I maybe maybe Larkin is like just the entire heart and soul yeah. of the team, and and they have a hard time, you know, getting getting game ready without him. I don't know, but like. <laughs> You know, he, you could you could tell they were ready to punch back, um, and the Islanders just play such a. I mean, we talk about it all the time. Their brand of hockey boring. It well, you always say that. Yeah, it's 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 <laughs> very, yes. The 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 way it's oriented uh, can lead to some very boring boring hockey games for sure. But the the Wings had no problem really like stepping on the pedal, and even though it was a zero zero first period, like the, there was constant opportunities at least happening. And team defense was not an absolute train wreck. I guess I'm getting ahead of myself. That's something we can talk about kind of later. My second difference maker is just the third line. And that's yeah. something that obviously, you know, you talk about the the two biggest. We talked, we joked before we hit record. You know, we, we always like when the difference makers are really obvious. Like both of them are, are really obvious. And I think this was a game where it was pretty clearly Larkin in the third line. And that's a line that we were really gassing up earlier in the year and when the Wings were winning a lot. And then, you know, got, got through, got to a point where, especially during the Larkin injury, people got reshuffled and moved around and whatnot. And it got split up a, a little bit before that as well. Um, but the boys are buzzing. And it that that Fisher, Rasmussen, Cop, obviously, I mean, that line single-handedly produced, uh, what, half of your goals, more than half of your goals? A phenomenal night. Yeah, oh, they combined for seven points, which I know you were you were joking beforehand that that's a little bit of a reach because they combined on goals for <laughs> each three other. Three goals, right? But yeah, they scored combined for three goals. Yeah, Fisher had yeah. one, and then uh, Cop had two. And Christian Fisher, best game he's ever had in a winged wheel. Three point night. I love that man. And he opened the scoring for the Red Wings, which was so vital. Like I screamed at the top of my lungs when Christian Fisher scored a breakaway goal yeah. through the legs of Elias Sorokin, because not just the fact that it was Fisher, who's somebody we really root for, but for the fact that I think that was the first time in eight games, not only the second since the losing streak began where the Red Wings scored first in a game. Like that was the big monkey they had to get off their back. We talked about it even against in the Columbus game. They got to such a horrid start that the team nearly gives up if they don't score first, even though they have like some of the most comebacks in the third period in the league. Yeah, yeah. So getting out ahead early, even with Reimer giving up a softie, which we'll talk about Reimer overall. I'm actually not going to kill him in this game. Um, but I mean, it was just so important for the Red Wings to get that first goal. And then after Reimer gave up the softie, they third line goes back out there. They score again. Uh, a Reimer get, or Fisher gets the feed from a beautiful feed from Ben Sherratt, by the way, dude, along the boards. Dude, I thought, yeah, we again, we gotta you don't want to get ahead of ourselves. Focus it, yeah. I keep I keep trying to jump ahead, but yeah. yes, yes. Uh beautiful feed from Sherratt. F Fisher gets the shot off. Cop nifty little move to bring it back out front from the side of the net to bury it. And yeah, then in hands. the third period, he ends up getting what ends up being the game winner. Uh Andrew Cop again off off a beautiful, I don't want to get ahead of myself, Simon Evanson. Chips the puck out for a breakout. Rasmussen drives to the net. Fisher takes the shot. Cop buries the rebound. Like that third line, the Red Wings, as good as and as much of a heartbeat as Dylan Larkin is, you could say that the other 50% of the reason why the Red Wings won this game is because of the heart and the hustle that third line showed. And they, there's no reason to break that third line up ever again unless they just fall apart. But these last few games, since they've come back together, they've looked like one of the Red Wings' best lines. 100%. Awesome. Oh, also Andrew cops first goals in 21 games. So the third line thing works for him. 
let's let's keep it. Hopefully, the next 100 comes quicker, baby. <laughs> right. Right. Uh, so we're going to take a quick break. When we return, we'll get to our other notable performances. I'll let Scotty get ahead of himself at that point. So stay <laughs> tuned to Lockdown Red Wings. Got to talk to you guys today about Indeed. No matter how the last game went, oh, we know how the last game went. Uh, anytime you take the field, you've got a shot at greatness. Give your team the best shot at winning by recruiting more MVPs with Indeed. If you're hiring, you need Indeed because Indeed is the hiring partner that you can attract, interview, and hire all in one place. And Indeed is the only job site, thanks, Scotty, where you're guaranteed to find quality applications and meet the must-have job requirements. Instead of spending hours on multiple job sites, hoping to find candidates with the right skills, you need one powerful hiring partner that can help you do it all. So join more than 3 million businesses worldwide that use Indeed to hire great talent fast. Start right now with a $75 sponsored job credit to upgrade your first job post at Indeed.com slash locked on. That offer is valid through March 31st. Again, that's Indeed.com slash locked on to claim your $75 job credit. Or $75 credit before March 31st. Terms apply. Need to hire? You need. Indeed. Indeed you do. Segment two, Lockdown Red Wings podcast. Man, I have a headache so bad. And <laughs> like from just screaming for both, for both Oakland and de, uh, the Red Wings. And then it was happening at the same time was just a whirlwind. I, I, I was, I was. It's the best headache ever. Yeah, just overstimulated. <laughs> just like too much going on at once. But uh, it all worked out. Oh, dude, I could cry. Oh. But like Oakland winning a tournament game is my Super Bowl. But well, again, awesome. back to the Red Wings. Uh, notable performers, Scott. Who stood out to you, buddy? Yeah, no, well, I uh, there's a lot in this game. <laughs> Honestly, I think I want to start with Edvinson just because for, for namesake reason, I guess, more than anything else. Um I think he had some really good moments in this oh, game. So and, good. Uh, yeah, I, I think you are very clearly seeing the, the stuff that you can't teach uh, on the ice, right? And I know that that's something that's been talked about a lot, but like the combination of size and speed that he has, and you can very clearly see that his uh, he's slowing the game down a lot more than he did when he first came up last year, right? It, like that was the big thing, you know, in preseason last year. And then the call up last year, we were like, oh, he looks better. But there's still some moments where he feels like he's rushing and, and kind, kind of letting the moment get too big. And, and I think, you know, while he, he doesn't look like the greatest defenseman of all time or anything, you can very clearly tell that, you know, the IQ has – uh, the hockey sense and hockey IQ has continued to go up. He's making a lot of good decisions. He made a few fantastic plays in this game when it was all said and done, and it just really seems like he's he's slowed the game down a lot and 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 looks fantastic out there. I mean, you you mentioned the size and the speed, but the puck protection number one is what stood yeah, out to me. For sure. Like he, there are several. Just part, part of that is just his long reach, right? Um, he he can reach so far, being six foot six without skates because his stick is so long that he can protect the puck even when he's pinned up against the board. So he'll just reach like that yeah. and pull it back. And he did that several times. He was he had a couple vital pinches to keep the puck in the zone, as well as one board battles. The the Dylan Larkin's first goal of the game doesn't happen. He doesn't get an assist in this game, but it doesn't happen without Simon Edmondson stepping up deep into the offensive zone to fight for the puck along the boards, then reversing it. Nearly picked off, but then Raymond picked it up sent that to Alex to bring it, who found Dylan Larkin. And then later on, as our, we've kind of already touched on the Andrew cops, Andrew cops, second goal doesn't happen without Edmondson just touch passing. It's a simple play, but those are the simple plays that are hard to make when you're a rookie, right? Like you, you need, it's, it was a simple, smart play to just touch that puck up to Michael Rasmussen, who carries it with speed into the offensive zone. And that doesn't happen without him winning the puck battle along the boards. Right. So, and those are just small things, right? Like timely blocked shots, just consistently being in the right space at the right time. And the thing I, I really liked about what you said was that he slowed the game down because that was such a huge component that I noticed as well. His ability to like literally get the puck and just make everyone down, slow down to his yeah, pace. and chill. Like it's, it's actually, it's really fascinating to watch. Cider became so good at that as well over the years, has become so good at that over the years as well. I, um, it's, it's very noticeable. And I, and you know, if we ever see, those two guys on a pair together, I don't think the puck will ever leave the offensive zone. Like, Cider is one of the best defensemen I've seen at just keeping the puck in the zone. And if you have 
both of those really long athletic guys out there at the same time on the blue line, I think <laughs> that would that would be a, a way to just keep the puck kind of permanently over there. It's uh, and yeah, you, you can see why people talk about the ceiling with Edvinson very clearly. And it's yet another game where he played big minutes. Uh, he played 19 minutes and 40 seconds, which is fourth on the team, but you know, second pair of minutes, regardless, just a couple seconds shy of his partner, Jeff Petrie, three minutes on the penalty kill, which is a huge ask of a rookie, but he was, he measured up the task. He looked great yeah. in all situations in this game. I think he had one bad turnover in this game. He had one bad turnover in the first game as well, but like you're taking the whole thing into account. He, I mean, even Dylan Larkin had a bad turnover in this game. So it's not like, that's just, you could chalk that up as a rookie mistake, but he's not the only one who makes mistakes like that. When you yeah, look yeah, at the full scope of the game, he was fantastic. And the defensive minutes overall were pretty even out. Oli Mata with at least that 18 minutes. Uh, Mort Sider getting 20 minutes and 42 seconds. Mort Sider had a great game as well. He actually had the fewest five-on-five five time on the ice minutes played uh, at 14.31, but that's also because he had a minute and a half on the power play and nearly five minutes on the penalty kill. So that's... I would have loved to see him a little bit more because that's something we talked about. I want to see more five-on-five five time with yeah, Cider. Yeah. But when he was out there, he and again, and I don't want to take anything away from the veterans on those lines, right? Like Sherratt and Petrie paired up really nicely with Edmondson. It was, it was the entirety of both those pairs that looked really good. Sherratt, another great game with Moritz Cider. Petrie, mm -hmm. another game with Simon Edmondson. They looked even stronger together. I agree. I, I, I do want to give credit to Petrie because the, like we just immediately broke that up uh, earlier this week. And I and I do want to give him credit because I think that they looked pretty good together in this game. Um, but the Sherratt insider pair is so fascinating to me because when we first brought in Sherratt, that was the plan. Remember? Like how mm -hmm. quickly we forget. Like that's what the... The, the top pair was it was cider and Sherratt, and it was so brutal that it lasted two months and then they were like oh let's try Wallman up there and then here we are you know like a, a very long amount of time later and now there's like obviously Wallman's heard and when he comes back we assume that he'll uh just re kind of plug into that spot that he's used to but it's just so fascinating like it, it's not a complete train wreck now a year and a half later than it was when it originally happened um and and yeah I think a lot of credit to Ben Sherrod in general this season has been a lot better than he was last year he has and I think a lot a big part of that is another year in a new system you know he's, sure. he's more familiar with the system so it's more natural he's not forcing things as much I think that's a big part of it I know we've given a lot of crap to the pet Petrie and Sherrod pair and we have massive problems with it and we're glad that it's finally broken up. And I think Simon Edison in this game, like earned his spot on this roster when Wallman gets healthy. Like, yeah. I, I think then there's, you're gonna have serious conversations about who to scratch every night. And that's a I good agree. problem to have, but separately, those two can still be effective hockey players. And they, I, I think they were effective in this game. I mean, just adding Simon Edmondson in there has made your defensive depth so much better. I mean, that's what Eisenman talked about took way longer than we would have liked but he talked about after the trade deadline, like we feel our acquisitions are in Grand Rapids. And then he took it two weeks and a huge losing streak and an injury to call up Simon Edvinson. But now that he's here, he's looked well, great. And I hope an that injury for both of them to get here. Right. Yeah. And so I hope that he, uh, he doesn't get sent back down anytime soon. Cause he looked great in this hockey game. Agreed. Um, oh yeah. Cider. I was talking about him. And I went back to Simon Edvinson. Cider had a couple of huge blocks in this game as well. I don't, I don't want to ignore yeah. that. No, he looks great. He is no, not afraid to throw his body in front. No, um, well, he had him and Reimer like tag team to save there at the yeah. end. It looked like I think Reimer, Reimer got most of it probably, but Cider did fall right, <laughs> kind of big tree falling on the uh, on the puck there to guarantee that it stayed out. Um, uh, you know, we probably have to talk about goaltending anyway. Like Reimer, the goals that he allowed were softies and it's very, very frustrating. Um, but we were talking about off air before, like he, he stepped up in the biggest moment of the game and kept the puck out of the net uh, when they, uh, when, when they went six on five there and, and could not win a face off to save their lives. So uh, yeah, credit where credit is due for, for standing on his head there at the end of the game. But yeah, the ones that he did allow were still soft. Well, like the, I'll defend the second and third goal he allowed, especially the the JG Pago goal. Like that was a rocket of a shot from the the point on the power play. Oh sure, sure, sure. Like I don't know, 
the, the Mike Riley goal was absolutely unacceptable. And that's something that yeah. Reimer has let in like a thousand times this season is like shot from high in the zone, just crossing. There's the another line. one that just missed rolled past the post that almost fell back. He almost had two of those. I really don't want to kill Reimer because he came up big in big. No, moments. yeah, that's my point. Somehow, but, somehow yeah. another game where he has a, pl- a 900 plus save percentage where yeah. he looks like he gives me a heart attack the entire game because everything he'll, he'll make a save and he'll freeze. Think he has it. And it constantly leaks behind him. Just <laughs> slowly every rolls time. out from behind and him. Yeah. His five hole is so like, it, but he made no, big no, time again, saves this, too, this is right? Like, like, I'm not trying to make it sound like a slam thing again. Like it, it's the no, opposite. I, he, I get it. I get it, he, Scotty. I, I, I get the really frustration. Get I'm saying this <laughs> game specifically, I'm not trying to make like a slam piece. I, uh, again, he, uh, he, he really stepped up in, in the most crucial time in the game when he needed to. So, um, yeah, he's credit, lucky credit too. Because- and he's the only goalie that's won a game for this team in the entire month of March. So three times. I don't, I don't know how, because he start every time he doesn't know where the puck is, he star fishes just like hopes that it's underneath him somewhere. And everything that comes into his pads down low trickles somewhere and he freezes. He thinks hey. he has it, but, Somehow Wins he made win, plus saves and has a 915 save percentage in this game again. Yep. And you ride the hot hand, and he's the hot hand right now. So Absolutely. credit to you, James Reimer. The team is winning when you're in net. So you're Absolutely. the goaltender of the Detroit Red Wings. Correct. Yeah. Uh, For the foreseeable future. <laughs> <laughs> we gotta get another quick break. When we return, we'll talk about Patrick Kane and Alex Debrinkit, clean up anything else that we want to mention, uh, and then talk about scores and standings and a very brief, a very brief preview of the Nashville Predators on Saturday. So stay tuned to Lockdown Red Wings. Got to talk to you guys today about FanDuel. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> I give him a little bit of responsibility on the podcast. And this is what happened. <laughs> I nailed this one. Oh, did you? I could have sworn well, I saw I, something else pop can, up there. It's fine. <laughs> Say goodbye to busted brackets. All you losers have busted brackets because none of you bet on Oakland University. But because FanDuel lets you bet on every game of the tournament, whether you're betting on a big upset or a one seed, it's time to go dancing on America's number one sports book. Right now, new customers get $200 in bonus bets. If your first $5 bet wins, that's 200 bucks to use on point spreads, money lines. You can even pick who is going to win it all. Visit FanDuel.com slash locked on and bet on college hoops until they cut down the nets. Segment three, Locked on Red Wings podcast. So Patrick Kane extended his point streak. He scored a 16th goal of the season, and uh, he is him. That is all known. Really, I feel like it's it's Alex Dabrinkit I want to talk about in this game. Still can't score. Uh, most frustrating aspect of his game, without a doubt. But career numbers and assists and that Cat Kane connection – feels like it's more so going towards Kane this season than it's going towards Cat. And he had two beautiful primary assists in this game, one to Dylan Larkin, and then the second one to Patrick Kane was even more beautiful when you rewind the ta- tape and look at the work he did along the boards to get that puck. He's the most frustrating player on the team that is still producing, just not in the way you had hoped, but in a good way. You know what I mean? <laughs> it's such a mixed bag. It's uh it's wild, man. I um it's every time we talk about it, I don't even know how to like go about it. It's it's so odd. Uh, because he had a couple of absolutely fantastic apples tonight, as you said. Um, three shots, too. Yeah. It won a few board battles. Good four check, which like is not something we really planned on, uh, and and certainly haven't got like super consistently, but like wasn't something that was really on our radar going into this. Like he he had a really solid all around game. It's just you know we thought we were getting a different type of player <laughs> for sure. We thought he was going to impact the game in a different way, uh, but he is in fact impacting the game. It's just it's 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 so odd to to really talk about. I think when we do kind of like our you know, player, uh, I don't know, reviews or whatever we're going to call them over the summer. Yeah. Like he's assess be our ex- 
assess our expectations like we did at the middle. Of right. The yeah. He's just going to be such a fascinating one to talk about. He will. I mean, that's gives him 34 assists on the season. He had a career high in assists last year at the Ottawa Senators at 39. So he's on pace to at least match that. Yeah. Uh, and he's also on pace to match his goal total too. It's still 66 points, which would have been second on the team last year. I maybe this is just him. He shoots a lot. Sometimes it goes in, more times it doesn't, but he is going to play with intensity on the top line and feed your real goal scorers. Maybe, but also at the same time, like two primary assists on two big goals in this game, especially the Larkin one. And without his hustle along the boards to strip the puck away from the Islanders defender to gain a two on one, the Kane goal doesn't happen. So yeah. it's like, oh, he 100%. Can and like we threw up the, the Dauber frozen tools. We threw up the player usage chart for the Detroit Red Wings yesterday. And Alex to is one of the top four forwards on this team in difficulty, difficult usage. And he's still firmly a positive Corsi four relative. In fact, that top line of, or that second line rather of comfort Kane and to was the only line on, on, in this game that had more shot attempts for while on the ice than faced. They were all 60% shot attempt share in this game because they just were, even though they, I mean, I guess technically they got results, at least to Brinkett did, even though some of that was with mixed lines as people were changing. Just he, he's been so good. He's just not scoring goals. And like, that's what I don't want to get lost on people. Like I know, and I'm frustrated too. I know the frustration with the four goals in the last 50 plus games is is warranted but at the same time like everything else he's doing is working and he is getting rewarded on the stat sheet just not in the yeah. 40 goal scorer we were hoping we were going to get yeah he's not doing nothing it's just he's not doing what we thought he was going to do i know and, and that's I, it, why it's, it's an uh, enigma right it's just a weird conversation about like okay well I, <laughs> the expectations for the rest of this contract are just going to be wild that's that's i guess my point right um, anything else from this game or any other players from this game you want to talk about? Uh, I mean, did we really, did we talk about Kaner specifically? Uh, continues to. Yeah. I mean, he's him. Be absolutely phenomenal. Um, it's one of those things like how much more do you want to brush the breakdown about Patrick Kane? He, yeah, he... no, there is nothing left. <laughs> there is nothing left to break down. It's just us talking about how cool he is. Like that, right. that, that was awesome. <laughs> um, I'm trying to think I, that might be it. We covered goaltending. Special teams couldn't get a goal on two power plays. Gave up a goal on four penalty kills. Eh. I thought they were fine. The power play, the first power play they had, they looked absolutely great. They just couldn't score. And their yeah, penalty kill looked great until JG Paggio in the third. And it's like, okay, well, they, that was their fourth power play. So yeah. it took them to their fourth to score. So anyways. Fisher for president. Fisher for president. Brian Fisher for pre oh yeah uh Christian Fisher for president. Uh anyways, Scotty. Oakland University, baby. No, I'm just kidding. You? Uh National Predators on Saturday. That is gonna be a tough game. Now, obviously, every game at this point is a must-win hockey game, but nothing is yeah, gonna be as such a this is just such a uh just screams like you look ahead to the Washington game and they don't you know, look past the opponent in front of you. Right. Like it, it just screams that, um, especially the predators, by the way, yeah. who are on fire since fire. their coach canceled the team's trip to a concert, which is hilarious that that's the spark, but let's see, they've won one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14 in their last 16. Not so bad. This is this is how it keeps happening to the wings. They keep playing whatever team is the hottest team in the NHL. Remember earlier they played the Edmonton Oilers that were on like a W17 streak? It was crazy. I don't I think you're we just played a team on it like an L6. Like I I think you maybe you have a biased memory there, but sure. Well, okay, I brought up one example, but still it happened. It happened months ago, a it, month ago. If I had a dime for every time this happened to the Detroit Red Wings, I'd have had two dimes, <laughs> but it's still weird that it happened twice. Fair enough. Uh, Philip Forsberg leads their team in points, 74 uh, points in 69 games, 36 goals and 38 assists. Just do, yeah. a do-everything winger for them. And then Roman Yossi, second on the team in points, and it was 70 and 69. We know who Roman Yossi is. He's great. But how about this, Scotty? Third on their team in points, Gustav Nyquist. 60 points in 69 games played. 
with the Nashville Predators this season. Have I ever told what? you that in my apartment I have a framed goose jersey? As you should. Gustav the Nyquist dog. is amazing. I love yeah. Nyquist with the Red Wings. That is that is the king forever, man. I he, I he legitimately was so close to breaking 30 goals that one year. Yeah. I'm trying to figure out is this like his best season to date as a as a as a professional hockey player points wise? His previous high, oh yeah, this is a Ooh. career high in yeah, points for Gustav him. Nyquist. Good for him, man. His, his yeah, we have a in our in, in our dining room, we have a Gustav <laughs> at, a Gustav Nyquist jersey. At 34, he sets a career high in points at 60, and there's still the dog, another man. 12 games of the season. Hey, that might buy him another contract in the league, baby. I think it will. That's awesome. Will. I, that makes me so happy for Gustav Nyquist. Same. Anyways, uh, Nashville Oops. Predators, don't look past them. I know, obviously, everyone's thinking about the Washington Capitals, but a win against the Predators, especially one that would give you a three-game winning streak, would actually help to lessen the impact of a potential loss to the Capitals. I don't want to talk about losing to the Capitals, but, yeah. I mean, winning every game you can before you get to that game For sure. can make it so that game has as little impact as possible, especially as they have games in hand now that's also assuming capitals maybe don't win every game until that game but the predators game is going to be just as massive um as the the, the islanders game just was probably i don't think anything's going to be as massive as the capitals game in two games oh, yeah, that's why you don't want to no, look past the predators yeah i hear you that's uh it's a big game it's a good team yeah yep their power play on the season uh to this point is ranked 20th. So that's a weakness of them. And their penalty kill is ranked 23rd. So their special teams aren't great, but Hey, the New York Islanders have the worst penalty kill in the league. You couldn't score on them either. So uh, come ready to play draw penalties. That's Lucas Raymond's specialty at least. And you might sneak out of uh, there with two points. It's a big road trip too. It's a five game road trip with tough matchups because you got Nashville, Washington, Carolina, Florida, and then one more that's not on my, uh, well, and Our also for what it's worth, the Caps next two games before the Wings are the Hurricanes and the Jets. Oh, so they got their own uh, set of of difficulties in front of them heading into that game as well. So you 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 see Saros is their starter. He's got a nine oh eight save percentage, so slightly above league average. League average this year is obviously down. I think it's up to like nine oh six now, but still yeah, down it's a little overall. bit up in the last month or two. But yeah, but. Win a hockey game, make it three in a row. Like I said, like I, like, like I said after the Columbus Blue Jackets game, sometimes it's the grind them out wins that can get the ball rolling in the right direction. And now you won six to three, to, even with a little bit of a heart attack there in the third period for a second. But you won six to three over the New York Islanders in what was an offensive explosion. Keep the ball rolling. Big road trip. You've done it before where you've gone on road trips and won a lot of games. Let's make it happen again. Let's. Scotty, any final thoughts? We absolutely ball, baby. Yep, we absolutely do. We'll be back on Monday with a game recap of the Nashville Predators. So stay tuned for that. Same time, same place. It's your team every day. Every day.